Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking out this video. Today we're going to be having a look at the All Powers S2000. This is a nice little portable power station they sent out to me a couple weeks ago. I've been using it almost every day and so far it's working really good. So I'm going to go over some of the features, some of the things I like about it, going to uh, put it through a bit of a torture test for you, all the usual stuff and kind of show you how it works. So Right off the bat, um, I've got some of the specs open here. It's got a 2000 watt inverter with a 4000 watt surge. It can charge at 500 watts of solar, 12 to 70 volts, uh, 500 watts AC input, and you can actually charge it simultaneously on both of those. So you plug the XT60 into the front right here, and you can plug your 120 volt right into the back. So both of those cables are included. You get this nice little storage bag. You also have a 12 volt cigarette lighter. Um, like I said, both of these can plug in at once and you can actually charge at 900 watts. Um, one of the other things I like about this is the charging brick is built into the unit. So that's all you get for your 120 volt charger is a little computer style power supply cable. Um, plugs right in. You don't have to drag around the actual power brick. So. That's a nice feature. Um, another thing I like about this guy is it's got the Bluetooth app, just like all the other all powers. Um, and I think overall my favorite thing is just the overall size and portability for the actual power output. This thing is just really small. It's fairly light. It's got a lithium ion battery, which I think makes it a bit lighter than the lithium iron phosphates. So um, overall, it's just really portable. So I'll set it up beside the Blue Eddy. You can kind of take a, uh, a look for yourself as far as size. Um, just very portable. One of my favorite things about it. So here it is up against the AC200P. Now the AC200P does have 500 watt hours more storage. This one has 1500 watt hours. This one has 2000, but huge size difference. Uh, same size inverter. And this one is exactly half the weight. The S2000 comes in at 30 pounds and the Blue Eddy is 60 pounds. So the portability for me is a big selling feature of the S2000. This thing is just so easy to grab and go. It's got really nice sturdy handles, very solid feel. You can just pick it up with one hand and away you go. You can put the uh, little all powers um, portable solar panel in your other hand and just be gone. Where the AC200, as much as I like it, it is very heavy. When I need to just move some power out to the shed or a different room, I find myself reaching for the S2000 a lot more just because it is so much more portable. And just like all the other All Powers power stations, it does come nicely packaged. Uh, big thick foam walls in here, no real risk of it being damaged and shipping. And this one also comes with like a nice little storage bag, almost like a barbecue cover. Um, just closes it up nicely, keeps the dust on it. Some of you might have, might have seen it sitting over here under my little phone station. Uh, and it was getting a little dusty sitting over there just for a couple weeks. So I will probably put that bag on it in the future just to keep things clean. Um, I'll show you a clip of it charging earlier today. We had a really horrible day as far as sun, so I was trying to get up close to the 900 watts uh, combined input, but we've had absolutely no sun for the last couple days. It's making things a little tough for my no gas November here, but uh, yeah, I'll show you the clip of that now. I did have to uh, reset it once. I had it tied to two of these panels in the backyard, so the combined... Um, I have them in series, so the VOC was like 69 volts, and it did actually throw a code once. It threw an E06 for uh, basically an over voltage on the input, so it is a hard cutoff of 70 volts. Um, but I did get it to run for a little bit there, got the uh, dual charging going, so it does work pretty well. Okay, I'm just trying to get the dual charging going. I just threw a code here a minute ago, but it looks like it is working now, so... Um, basically you can plug in your AC and your solar at the same time and combine the charging inputs. Now, unfortunately we're only making about 80 Watts on solar. So we're going to top out, looks like around 430 Watts. The maximum input is 900 Watts. It would have been nice to see that, but like I said, we've had absolutely no sun this week. So, uh, unfortunately that's the most we're going to get out of it today. So we're going to fully charge it up and then we'll take it in the house and heat the house with it for a little bit. Basically what I've been doing is uh, with the little crypto phones over here, if we have a really good day as far as sun and these get nice and charged up, right now we're at 60%, um, then I'm just taking some power out of this and dumping it down into the all powers where it sits, get a full charge on that, and then I take it inside and uh, if the basement's cold or whatever, I'll just throw a space heater on for an hour or two. 
use it for a bit of heat. As uh, some of you know, I'm trying to go October and November without using any natural gas to heat my house. So far, so good, but the sun conditions have uh, definitely been testing me lately. I'm not getting a whole lot of solar, but it is going pretty well. So uh, we're at 94% state of charge. The shunt shows 364 watts. I have this little guy plugged in and it shows 392 over here. I have noticed when I run my space heater, it shows around 640 watts. And I know for a fact that space heater pulls 700. So a little bit of a discrepancy in the wattage, nothing huge, but uh, something to be aware of. Okay, I've got things set up here in our basement spare bedroom. This is definitely one of the coldest rooms in the house. So for my no gas October and November, I've been throwing around some heat using this all powers, the Blue Eddy, different methods, but uh, for this test, I'm gonna be plugging in this little space heater to the S2000. I have the Amazon power meter here so we can see what our full capacity is gonna be on this battery. Like I said, it's rated for 1500 watt hours, but obviously we are going to lose some of that to efficiency losses. So I'm gonna get this reset. We'll start up the heater and just see how much we can actually pull. Okay, I've got the power meter reset. We're showing zero kilowatt hours, 114 volts, which is a hair on the low side, but within acceptable range for sure. Uh, 59 Hertz and tiny little draw right now just for the circuitry of the space heater. So we're gonna go ahead and get the heater fired up. We're gonna put it on the high setting. Um, should give us around one hour of runtime, I would think. That should be close to 1400 watts. We'll crank up the temperature here so it stays running. And here we go. So pulling just shy of 1200 watts, we'll double check that on the power meter, 9.7 amps, and we're showing 1245 watts here. So like I said before, a little discrepancy between the meter and the all powers. I think the all powers does read a little bit low. Looks like it's going to give us 58 minutes of runtime according to the shunt. So we'll let that run for a little while, um, kind of keep half an eye on it here for the next hour and just see how it does. Okay, so I just poked my head in here around the half hour mark and the heater has actually turned off, which means I think it has satisfied the 75 degree set point we set. I hope so anyway, it definitely shouldn't be turned off uh, because of a dead battery. So we'll take a quick peek with the thermal camera here, make sure nothing is too hot and then we'll get it fired back up. So heater is definitely the hottest thing in the room. Looks like the second hottest is the head of the plug uh, to the space heater, pretty warm, 114 degrees. Uh, so far the all powers S2000 looks like it's doing good. A little bit of heat in the top there, but nothing too crazy. So far we've pulled 578 watt hours and we're sitting at 53% state of charge. So we'll get the heater turned back on here. I'm pretty sure it just turned off because of the set temp. Yep, there we go. So we'll get it fired back up, pull the rest of our capacity. Looks like we're good for another 30 minutes and we'll check back in. Okay, it looks like we are definitely dead. Yeah, 0% AC inverter has turned off and we have no display on the power meter. So unlike the little S700 I tested, this does not appear to save 5% capacity for kind of a, a bottom, uh, discharge floor. So it looks like we will have to plug this into the wall to get our output. So we were able to pull 1.1 kilowatt hours of the rated 1.5 kilowatt hours, giving us an efficiency of 73%. Now that could have been a little bit better if I had have ran the space heater on the 700 watt setting, just allowing the inverter to be a little more efficient. Uh, and we did start from a 99% state of charge, not quite 100. So could have been closer to that 75, 76% range. Overall, I think that's pretty good. Now, if I have a full charge on the S2000 and I'm trying to save some power for overnight runtime on my main system, I take the S2000 and plug it into the mini split. It has no trouble running the EG4 solar heat pump. Uh, this is a pure sine wave inverter and it's got lots of power. It can handle that no problem. So it is a much better bang for your buck as far as heat to energy is concerned. This will usually give me about two hours of heat before we go to bed and then I switch it back over to the main system for overnight. So we'll let the mini split come up to speed and then just dump as much heat into the house as possible before bed. Usually gives me right around two hours and then I'll switch it back over to the main battery overnight. I am gonna have a discount code to the S2000 below, so feel free to check it out online if you're interested. As always, thanks for tuning into the video. Thanks for checking out my No Gas November series and I'll see you in the next one.